Unlike man, whose physical limitations are dictated from the moment of his birth, the insect is born with the ability to actually improve upon his own body. When he reaches the limits of his capability, he miraculously transforms into an entirely new being. The caterpillar is born with only half the equipment he needs for survival, for his only function in life is to eat. Denied the ability to reproduce, he would die before fostering others of his kind. But from his incomplete body, he will salvage new life. Hardening from within, his skin begins to split, extruding with convulsion an alien, sleeping form. Through a process similar to the contractions of birth, the new form squeezes outward into the air, a creature with no resemblance to the life it had just hours before. Now helpless, without eyes or legs, the pupil form extends a club-shaped appendage and struggles desperately to attach itself to the branch. Having outlived his function, the caterpillar is gone. His pathetically shriveled remnant cast off like a worn out coat. It is the miraculous process of metamorphosis. In hours, the unsightly mummy has been wrapped in beauty. A coffin adorned with jewels where he will slumber until the signal comes to awaken. Within the privacy of this chrysalis, his transformation becomes complete. New cells replacing the old to create an entirely fresh existence. A creature with no awareness, no memory of any existence past. Where the thorn once stood, now stands the rose. But like his predecessor, the butterfly too has only one function in life. Whereas the caterpillar lived only to eat, he lives only to mate. Lacking a mouth to chew with, from flowers he draws liquid sustenance, mixing with them to create the most beautiful visual harmony in all of nature's symphony. This is the main computer center at the California Institute of Technology. Here, the most sophisticated machinery man has at his command is being used to study the primitive brain of the insect, to document and probe the astounding efficiency of such a simple... Compared with man, we have to admit 
that the insect does not display what we could describe as intelligence. But don't feel too proud about that, because where there is no intelligence, there is also no stupidity. His brain is without evaluative power. It has no capacity to reason or to hesitate before reacting. Ironically, this works in his favor. For without man's burden of injecting emotion into what he sees, the insect reacts instantaneously, without regret, without regard for any but himself. Rather like a primitive computer, able to respond to information at the flick of a switch. Now, I wouldn't dare compare a brainless insect to man's brilliant computer, would I? Think about it. A computer is a mechanism programmed with a thousand tiny bits of information. It operates by juggling that information into a form of logic. I humbly submit, it's not without analogy in the insect world. The living prototype of the computer was designed by nature herself, long before man ever set foot on Earth. The termite mound, one of the first experiments in social order. Deceptively tranquil facades masking the intricate workings within. Moving through the hidden circuits, a thousand tiny particles of information organize themselves into a form of indisputable logic. Their source of power are their queens, great throbbing masses of energy, motivating all with their insatiable need. Should a queen be allowed to die, the rest will perish too, for within her pulsating body lies the future of the mound. She may live a half century, tended by endless generations of her offspring. Unable to feed herself or move, she exists to manufacture one product, the indispensable commodity of new life. of 10,000 per day, eggs exude with the regularity of assembly line production. Carefully sorted out, counted and stored by the workers in subterranean nurseries where they will incubate until the time of their birth. Once born, they too will make their demands, requiring continual feeding until the time they can fend for themselves. Never able to leave the protective walls of their mound, they come into a world that is completely self-sufficient. In one section is a garden, a working insect farm where tiny mushrooms are carefully cultivated to supply a never-ending source of food. The entire society is guarded by soldiers, sentries equipped with outsized jaws, who will warn with a snap of their heads if the mound is ever invaded by enemies. 